all and welcome to this tutorial about evaluating sludge management. We are currently in the treatment section of sanitation in the inventory. In this video I will talk about evaluating the sludge management in general and then evaluating storage of sludge and sludge disposal. Just so you all can remember where we left off with the last sanitation treatment video, we have a treatment facility with one treatment phase. I'll show you the configuration real quick. We are in Peru and we have our assessment period of one year. And like I said, we have entered data already for the treatment phase. Moving on to sludge, treat, sludge management. It's evaluated using these questions down here. So here we have the question evaluate sludge management and we can toggle yes and this option uh, opens options for us. There are, I would say, three different sections of these questions. The first is evaluating the sludge storage in the wastewater treatment facility. And then we have this grouping of all the different end fates or or um, disposal sites of the of the sludge and then finally we also have this option to evaluate transportation of sludge to the disposal site. I will go through these three different phases. So first evaluating sludge storage in a wastewater treatment facility I'll toggle yes and now we can start to see the information that one needs when they are evaluating sludge. So often it starts or it always starts with the dry weight. The dry weight we've already entered up here. In this case we did use a default value but you all of course should and can enter data from your facility. So I will just assume that all of the of the sludge is stored at the wastewater treatment plant. I'm going to say a four full week because then it becomes significant so that you all can see what this stage does. It might be that you're not stored, storing it for, for that long. Um, and then the other question that's very frequent in this component of ECAM is whether the sludge is digested or not. In this case, we haven't considered any digestion up till now, and so we will keep it that way. And then we can use this emission factor due to storage. I'm going to use this estimation. So now if we scroll up, we can already see that there is some amount of emissions being produced from sludge management here. Now, moving on to the end fate, I will show you all specifically land filling, um, but each of these options asks for a slightly different amount of data. And in this part of ECAM, it becomes important to enter data if you have it, but also to search for any default values that, that might be suggested. So here, once again, I will just enter this same dry weight, assuming that all of my sludge is going to landfill and that it is still non-digested. And then, for example, this uncertainty factor, we already have one point where we don't know what to enter. But if you just put your cursor over the, over the code for this factor, then you see that there's this default value of 0 0.9. So sometimes in ECAM, you have to search for a value like that if you don't know something. Um, same for landfill, uh, methane in landfill gas. Here we have 50%. Of course, this is, this is something that you might really know about your landfill if you have some specific data about it. In that case, don't put 50%. Here, same thing, 80%. Um, this percentage decomposed in first three years for whatever reason doesn't show right here. If, if you still don't know at this point, if you've already put your cursor over the code, you can also go ahead and click into the factor. And then here, for example, in the reference, it gives a 69.9. So don't give up until you've read all the information about the factor if the if ECAM maybe suggests a value. So then I will go down here and enter this value, the suggested value 69.9. Then we have another characteristic of the landfill, whether it practices flaring, gas recovery, or 
no um, management of methane. In this case, I will say flaring. And then the nitrogen content, again, is determined based on whether it is digested or not digested. If you, if you have data on the sludge, of course, you can enter then a more specific factor. And then here also we have a suggestion of 1.5 from ECAM. Great, now we filled out the landfilling section and we can see up here that our emissions are actually relatively high from sludge management. Landfilling is not the best option in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, um, but you also have the other options here. Feel free, if I, or in your shoes, I would go ahead and click through these options. There are some information that you that you might have to know. For example, if you incinerate, then then the the average highest temperature of combustion, for example, is is important to know. Um, and there are different factors like that in all of the different options. Hope that this video was helpful for you all trying to include sludge management into your ECAM assessment and that you look at the rest of the videos if you have more questions. Thanks for listening and happy assessing.